seven weeks. It was so good. I took a long break from Australia and boy, did I need it. Didn't even comb my hair to get on the show. It was all so relaxing. And it wasn't just me who needed to get out. I tell you what, occasionally someone would rescue, uh, recognize me out there, especially on a, a cruise ship off Spain that I was on, my wife's 60th birthday present. I didn't know there'd be more than 100 Australians there, including uh, former Labor Minister Joel Fitzgibbon. Anyway, people would stop me and tell me how great it was to be away from this madness here because our country's gone crazy and politicians, they're just making things worse, aren't they? For instance, I see the Reserve Bank. It hasn't just hit Australians with yet another interest rate rise while I was away, but it's now saying 140,000 of us need to lose our jobs to stop this terrible inflation. And I'm thinking, excuse me, is, is that really now the, the best way that we fight inflation by deliberately throwing 140,000 Australians out of work as well as belting the ones with mortgages? I mean, sure, inflation does have to be tackled, but in the seven weeks I've been away, I see the Albanese government is still refusing to do something far more useful. And it's painful to cut prices. I mean, how about dropping its insane plan, finally, to shut down even more coal and gas power plants and replace it with green power that Labor still falsely claims is cheaper. At least being overseas means I didn't have to listen to absolute bull like this. We know on this side that reducing emissions and reducing bills are the same thing. Well, in the seven weeks I've been away, this has this global warming craze government actually managed finally to cut power prices yet, you know, with this green policies or, well, oh dear. I've just seen that they've instead gone up again, as if green power, big surprise, is in fact the most expensive you can get. Now, talking about how this government just makes things worse, while I've been away, it's also been flogging its new plan to spend another $2 billion on building social housing. Now, the many Australians can't even afford to buy their own home or even find one to rent. Every Australian deserves the security of a roof over their head. But hang on, this same government actually helped create this crisis in the first place by importing almost 400,000 immigrants last year. 400,000, all of course wanting somewhere to live. Now, if all that's not bad enough, the government's also spent these last seven weeks that have been away pushing its plan to divide us by race with the voice, a kind of Aboriginal only advisory parliament. <laughs> I mean, apartheid in my own country, I tell you what, people on, uh, that I met on the holidays. They were just as ashamed of what was going on as I am. And why is this happening? I mean, I, I see that in all the time it was away, the government still hasn't explained how this voice will work, has it? Hasn't told you how it's going to fix anything. Instead, it's telling porkies. I've been switching the TV back on this week. And I saw Indigenous Australians Mr. Linda Burney up there repeatedly refusing to say exactly what this voice would get up to. Until yesterday, blurting out in apparent desperation this stupid claim, this fake claim. I can tell you what The Voice will not be giving advice on. It won't be giving advice on parking tickets. It won't be giving, giving advice on, a, on tra changing Australia Day. Order. Like so much that she now says, I mean, I tell you what, Linda Burney is just making stuff up. Experts say, well, hang on, there's nothing at all to stop the voice actually telling the government to change Australia Day. She's wrong. And one of the designers of the voice, Thomas Mayo, of the government's own referendum working group that designed the damn thing, says he's keen to use the voice to scrap all things colonial, plus grab reparations as well. And what's more, the Yes 23 campaign director, Dean Parkin, they're for the voice, arguing for the voice, last year said, indeed, it's going to be used to try to change Australia Day. And the constitutionally guaranteed voice is going to be the mechanism that allows us a seat at the table to ensure that these conversations around truth, be it on the 26th, be it on any other issue that's affecting our people, that we have a real say. And then today I also saw something I've been so happy to be able to ignore for the last seven weeks. Indigenous Australians Minister Burney, so clueless now that she has to read word for word prepared answers in question time.
today giving a scripted non-answer when asked whether she'd actually misled Parliament with that claim, you know, oh no, can't advise on Australia Day. Uh, and she had misled it, hadn't she? Did the Minister mislead the Parliament when she said, and I quote, I can tell you what The Voice won't be giving advice on. It won't be giving advice on changing Australia Day. End of quote. It is not the policy of this government to change the date of Australia Day. The Voice may give advice, but the Parliament re retains its primacy. For seven glorious weeks, I haven't had to listen to all this race-baiting nonsense and haven't had to listen to the Prime Minister telling his great big falsehood about this voice. This is a modest request. How I pity you for having had to listen to this deceitful yammer for seven weeks. Lucky me to have had a holiday from it. And there was one last thing I could ignore in that time. More proof that Labor cynically exploited the unproven claims of former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins that she was raped by a colleague in the office of the Defence Minister after a drunken night out. I miss the new evidence that Finance Minister Katie Gallagher misled Parliament, she too, when she claimed that she didn't know about these rape claims before Higgins went to the media. I was told by one of your senators two weeks before um, about what you were intending to do uh, with the story in my office two weeks before. Oh, I had no knowledge of this. Until no one had any knowledge. Okay. I had no we knowledge were one of this. How dare you? Order. Now we will it's all move. about we protecting will yourself. We may... But then, surprise, up came a recording of Higgins and her boyfriend, David Shiraz, showing that Shiraz had earlier sent Gallagher material on the case to get Labor's help to trash the alleged rapist, don't worry about a trial, and smash the Liberals, which Gallagher was then forced to admit. Mr Shiraz provided me with information. I think we've seen that in the paper in the last couple of days. Uh, I did nothing with that information. Uh... But apparently Labor doesn't think even that's proof that Gallagher misled Parliament because, hey, who cares about the truth? In these miserable days, it's all so grubby. It's all so grubby and so stupid. And no wonder then, some Australians do feel they have to leave this country to at least breathe in some clean air.